Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation on uh, spectrophotometry. I'm Dexter Pajarito. I will be discussing with you the principles of uh, spectrophotometry that is very important in the investigation of many um, substan substances. Spectrophotometric method is a quantitative technique that is, uh, that is used to measure many uh, chemical substances, particularly the concentration of substance from a sample. And this technique uses light. Since spectrophotometry uses light to quantify the amount of radiation, let us explore the properties of light. It says here, en light is an energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. And uh, it has dual nature okay the properties of light can be explained in the form of wave or in the form of particle wave explains the physical properties of light and as a particle this explains how light interacts with the matter when it comes to the wave properties of matter it says here light waves consist of perpendicular oscillating electric and magnetic fields so uh, as a wave it has an electric field okay and it has magnetic waves the wave properties of matter okay uh, we are still exploring the wave properties of matter let's explore what is a wavelength or simply uh, denoted as lambda a uh, wavelength is the crest to crest between waves so this is the these are the crest, okay, and this is uh, this this is the wavelength. Frequency is the number of complete oscillation that the wave makes each second. Okay, the unit of frequency is hertz, and one hertz is equal to reciprocal second. Okay. One oscillation per second is called one hertz. The wave number is another way to describe electromagnetic radiation. It is defined as the number of waves per centimeter and is equal to one over lambda. It has a units of as reciprocal centimeter. Okay, I have shown you this earlier. The wavelength, which is the distance between crest to crest. Um, we're still uh, on the properties of wave. It says here that the light in vacuum travels at the speed of uh, 2.998 times 10 to the positive 8 meter per second in vacuum. This is the speed of light or the velocity in vacuum. Now, we can, um, we can relate the speed of light to the frequency and wavelength. Remember, this symbol is the wavelength, and this symbol is for the frequency. So C, which is the um, speed of light, is equal to um, lambda, or wavelength, times the frequency. Okay. The other property of matter is, aside from the wave, it has a... It can also be described as particle. So the particle nature of light or um, the photon. With regards to the energy and in many radiation, matter interaction, it's more convenient to think of light as a particle or photon. Okay, the particle is called photon. Each photon carries energy, which is given by this formula. E is equal to H times V, where H is the Planck constant, okay? Planck constant, which has a value of 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules second, okay? And then uh, this symbol, this symbol here is the symbol for the frequency, okay? If we are going to combine this uh, Planck constant times the speed of light divided by the lambda, we can have the formula of energy, energy of a photon. 
this table shows you uh, shows you only the conversion of wavelength from angstrom nanometer to micrometer and even in uh, millimeter so most commonly we use nanometer but it's also important that you could uh, trans uh, or you can convert one unit to another okay for our simple calculation what is the frequency of light that has a wavelength of 537 nanometer so we are asked to get the the frequency with um with this wavelength of 534 nanometer so remember our formula earlier our equation is c is equal to lambda over lambda times the frequency so we are looking for frequency okay so frequency is equal to the speed of light c all over lambda all right so the frequency is 5.59 times 10 to the positive 14 reciprocal second another calculation sample calculation what is the wavelength of light in nanometers that has a frequency of 7.89 times 10 to the positive 14 reciprocal second so um you are just uh, going to use again the formula c is equal to lambda times the frequency but this time you are asked to get for the to calculate for the wavelength in nanometer okay so lambda is equal to um, the speed of light c all over the frequency okay the frequency is 7.89 times 10 to the positive 14 reciprocal second okay and the answer is 380 nanometers okay this time you are asked to um, calculate for the energy of photon what is the energy per photon of the sodium d line with the wavelength of 589 nanometer okay so this time you are going to use the uh, this equation e is equal to Planck constant times the uh, speed of light divided by the wavelength so the energy is 3.37 times 10 to the negative 19 joules earlier we have defined light as an energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation so uh, with regards to electromagnetic radiation um, what you see here is the electromagnetic um, spectrum okay the spectrum of the electromagnetic light okay or electromagnetic radiation so as you can see from your um, in your left you have gamma rays and you have here the radio radio waves okay spectro photometric method particularly the uv bis or uv visible spectrophotometry utilizes this particular region of the electromagnetic radiation which is the visible the visible light okay visible light is only a tiny fraction of the entire electromagnetic radiation so the uv bis uv bis or UV visible spectrophotometry utilizes this region of the entire electromagnetic radiation, okay, which is the visible region from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. Well, um, some most of the machines now, just like what we have in the College of Medicine, the spectrophotometer there um, is UV and visible so it's um, ub ub base all right this slide shows you the um relationship or what happens to the molecule when the molecule absorbs these different kinds of energy okay say for example when a molecule is bombarded by x-ray the molecule undergoes ionization 
okay? Whereas the visible light, when a matter or when a molecule absorbs visible or near UV, okay, the effect is electronic transition. I will explain what is electronic transi transition later. Whereas um, when a molecule absorbs or when it's bombarded by infrared or IR, the molecule would, um, would vibrate. Okay? Whereas microwave, there is rotational, rotational motion. Just like, uh, for example, when, um, when we heat our food in microwave, what happens is the molecules of water rotate until the energy is transferred from that molecule to another molecule. And when the, when the other water molecule rotates, um, it, it releases um, energy in the form of heat. Okay? So microwave, rotational, infrared, molecular vibration, whereas visible and near UV electronic transition. So since we are dealing with UV spectro or UV visible uh, spectrophotometry, we expect that there's an electronic transition. That is, an electron is uh, um, an electron is um, how do you call that? Excited from ground state to an excited state. As you can see in this uh, slide, the of the electromagnetic spectrum, the energy and uh, the wavelength are inversely proportional. Okay? From your right, from the right to left, as you can see here is the energy increases from right to the left. Okay? So, if you will compare radio waves from gamma rays, of course, gamma rays have um, higher energy. And as I said, the energy and wavelengths are inversely proportional from your left to right, the wavelength increases. Gamma rays, uh, short wavelengths, radio waves, higher or longer wavelengths. Okay, radio waves, these are long at the long end of the electromagnetic spectrum, okay? On the order of kilometers long, okay? Um, we know that longer, long wavelength, low energy, and uh, the radio, radio waves are utilized by the telecommunication. Microwaves, they have uh, wavelengths on the order of centimeter and are also low energy, but they can be dangerous because of their absorption. Uh, causes the generation of internal heat. Okay, so microwaves are used to heat up our food stuff. We use that in kitchen, but we also use that in uh, laboratory to, to dry some samples. How about the infrared uh, infrared region? Okay, these wavelengths are extremely short. Okay. We cannot uh, represent that in uh, using um, measuring tools, okay? Usually in nanometers. With regards to ultraviolet region or UV, uh, the wavelengths are shorter, meaning more energy. They are known to cause harm such as uh, sunburn. On the other hand, X-rays, which is used to... Uh, to have an image of the tissue, okay, extremely short wavelengths, thus extremely high energy. Gamma rays are uh, extremely high in energy and uh, the wavelengths are extremely short, all right? Whereas the visible, the visible region, as I said earlier, this comprise of the tiny region of um, entire electromagnetic spectrum, and uh, the visible, the visible region is associated with the colors that we see. So this makes the world beautiful 
or the nature beautiful because of this tiny region of the electromagnetic spectrum.